Hello everyone. Well, I put a sack in this pen just now. This is the one that I made me think of how jaded I've become with pens. And when I saw this, I remember the first time I saw this pattern and this color, and I thought a little spark sparked. And I thought, well, I'm going to put a sack in this and I'm going to use this for a while. Maybe I'll keep it. Um, it has a very sweet, very fine, slightly flexible Schaefer something or rather nib. Is it a junior? Is it a... What kind of Schaefer nib is it? Do I have a loop anywhere near my... Hold on. It's a Schaefer 33. So, a small nibbed Schaefer. This is about as small a nib as they made. But, as we know, size is not all that important. For things, <clears throat> sometimes it is, but oftentimes it isn't. Um, No matter how small your hands are, you can still sign something that will reverse years of intelligent planning and regulations about car emissions and you can just, with your little tiny hands, sign something that will make them all go bye-bye. And somehow that's, that was supposed to have been good. Okay, I'll get off my soap box. Um, <clears throat> in recent years, I have been rediscovering the charm of these very, very fine, just slightly flexible nibs as I have been with very firm, slightly flexible nibs, but very different reasons or different feelings I get from each of those. One, well, I guess it isn't too surprising. One makes me want to draw very delicately and the other one makes me want to draw rather forcefully. But um, I realize, I mean, I've realized for a while, but I, it's something that we don't normally talk about, is how important the paper is. And I just, no, oh, did I take, was this the one I took out? I don't remember. I'm using, um, this is paint sample paper. This is glisten green, the color of this paper. This is glisten green. And I'm using ink out of a Waterman bottle, which means nothing in my house. What does this say? Havana Brown. Havana Brown. Why does it say Havana Brown? Oh, Havana. That's what it says. Ink. Havana ink. What do you know? So maybe this is undiluted, sometimes, or unmixed. Sometimes I, I need to do a project where I um, will mix a couple of different ink colors for one little project, and then I'm stuck with this literally shitty brown color, or not quite so literally shitty green color. And I have to use it up. Or I can throw it away, I suppose. Um, but one of the, th you know, we do have, there are, let me just get a new piece of paper and explain. Do we like this? Is this finished? I don't even know what this is. What is this? Should I make it a bird? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's 
that's a bird. There's his little beak. There's his little eyeball. There's his little feet. Done. Add to shopping cart. One million dollars. So uh, let me get a piece of paper and describe the things that we can think about when we're using a pen and testing out a pen. Oh, what kind of paper am I going to use? No, I'm going to use this paper. Eighteen ninety one. Mrs. Henry Bates. Those were the good old days when women didn't have first names. What do you think? Make America great again? Is that what we're going to do? Mrs. James Connor. Look at how nice this was done. I wonder if they used a ruling pen for those. I don't have enough clear space for... Take this one. Someone wrote on this. Dina Frantic Clear and Present Danger. So let's, the things that we need to think about when we're using a pen, let's make a list. Pen use. Pen use. Okay. Everyone. You, 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 every single person that uses a pen has to think about the pen. There'll be subcategories here. Has to think about the ink. There'll be subcategories there. Has to think about the paper. And maybe has to think about, well, does think about the product, the you, what is it, what are you doing with this pen? So, I'm not, the pen, of course, has many, many different elements to it. The size of the pen, the length of the pen, the weight of the pen. Some people think the color of the pen is important. For me, um, at my work desk here, I have brown pens that I use, that I fill with brown ink, so I know I don't have to clean up the whole pen to change an ink color. I have pens specifically for brown, some for red, some for black, some for blue, some for green, and a green pen has green ink in it usually. So, anyway, the pen is mainly I'm talking about the nib. So what kind of nib are you going to use? Is it going to be fine, firm, italic? Is it going to be, or stub for italic lettering? Or is it going to be um, flexible, firm, whatever? So let's say down here, the product, let's say you're um, at work and you need to sign lots of things that you have to apply a lot of pressure to make duplicates. Do people even make, need to make duplicates anymore? But that's, that will, a use down here, duplicates I'll just say, will require a firm nib up here. ink maybe isn't important. The paper, yes, the paper, you have to use duplicate paper. You probably can't have a pen that's too sharp. The nib has to be a little broader because a really fine nib that you press down really, really hard on is going to rip the paper. So all of these things have to play together nicely. Um, a flexible nib, 
because it's by its nature delivers a lot of ink you don't want a paper that's going to bleed because it will just turn to mush here I'm using dipping this green pen into what color ink? Brown ink. I'm not supposed to do that, but a very flexible nib like this. I can't use paper that's really shitty because it's going to bleed and feather. So this requires, unless that's what you want. If you want it to bleed, it's fine. But you can't just you can't just pick a nib and think it's going to work for you. You have to if you pick a nib, you have to pick the right paper. And if you if the use is the most important, you start there and work backwards. If you need red ink for whatever reason, you, you might start here, red. Okay, with that in mind. <clears throat> I can't use <clears throat> I can't use red paper. You won't see it. I have to use a different color paper. I have to use a lighter color pa paper than red, obviously. But if I use black ink, I could use red paper. That makes sense. So, <clears throat> but anyway, the point is, I'm to give a. Uh, review of a pen. And some reviewers actually do this. They say, you know, especially when they're talking about ink color, because ink color on a YouTube channel depends on the com the monitor you're looking at it on and the lights that the reviewer used and the quality of camera and YouTube you know, simplification, you know, what, whatever they do to make the things be less robust. They might change the color in their condensation of the data. Um, so, but, okay, you've got a pen, you've got a use, product, you have paper, um, and color and everything else. The ink, the ink has to do with flow. Some ink is thicker than others. Um, some paper just does not work with ink. Some paper works with like this paper. Works woven gold. This paper works very, very. differently on this paint swatch than it does on the 100-year-old ledger paper. And they're not all going to work the same, so just don't try a pen. What I ask people when they would buy pens from me, they'd come to my house and buy a pen, I'd say bring the paper you use on a daily basis because if they you know they try it out on you know I'm I'm a clever salesman I'll I supply them with this beautiful smooth hundred year old paper and they they love the way the pen writes on it and then they bring it home and they put it on their Staples copy paper they got, and they say, Progressive Center, why are, you, why, are you, why are you selling me this pen that doesn't work? And I said, I didn't sell it. I, I sold you a pen that worked very well. It was just working on good paper. You can't have shitty paper and expect the pen to work. Same thing with ink. Some people, as much as I love Nathan Tardiff, his inks are too thick for my needs. But if I, if that's all the ink I had, he once told me when I said, you know, your ink takes forever to dry. 
He said that's because you use, you need to use shitty paper. Thank you, I don't do that. I do calligraphy on quite lovely paper for weddings because the people that are getting married buy good paper. Um, but you need to th think of all of these things if, you're, if your use is to make permanent drawings that you're going to frame and sell for a million dollars. You can't use regular fountain pen ink because it's going to fade over time. You might need to use India ink or um, some sort of permanent ink. And there you have to either use a safety pen or immediately when you're done, completely clear out, take your pen apart, which I don't recommend, and um, clean it. But when you take your pen apart to clean it and you break it, don't expect any help from me. No, you, you can, you can, I will share your pain, but I will not refund your money. Don't use India ink. Some paper, I just, I did something on some paper yesterday, and it, it was wet, still wet. It wasn't really paper I was writing on. It was, I don't know if these things are plastic or what. Yeah, look, there's st it's still smeary. So whatever this is, this looks like paper, but it's I think it's plastic. And I think it's meant to take ink and then you wash it off and then re write a new word. This is a weird scene. Here's <clears throat> an example of a artist tool that probably should be thrown away. It's a bunch of pens I bought at a flea market <clears throat> or a garage sale or something and they're almost all dead. There's, But there's somehow the ink that's left in this pen ends up going right to the tip where it's supposed to be, but it doesn't stay wet very long. It stays wet right when you put it down. That's a big blob right there. And then it sort of dies out immediately. So it's really kind of fun to see that what kind of things you can get out of it. And it allows me, and this paper is kind of fun because I put something down, I draw on it, and it's this surface like that paper that still isn't dry from yesterday. And I'm able to make the ink go away. But it's kind of fun to draw with this. I like the noise it makes too, the little bat squeak. So oh. now I go with back to this. Now look at the, even the difference in weight of line changes here. Zooming this in so you can see how much fun I'm having. It's kind of fun. Squeak, squeak, squeak. The name of this color is woven gold. Does that look like woven gold to you? Okay. So 
I've had these markers, and I quote should have um, I could have. I had these markers for years, and I every time I use them, I think why do why don't I throw them away? Because they, but I, then I remember how much fun they can be with that little tiny bit of ink that they've got left. There, woven gold. This I made this one earlier today, yellow brick road. So here we've got the. Wicked Witch of the North having been crunched, or the South, whatever she was, the one that got killed. And the Yellow Big Road starts here, goes through the forest, and there, there are our Dorothy and the dog and the scarecrow and everyone, and they're about to go to the poppy fields poppies and there's emerald city and there's the witch do i want to go back with this squishy pen why not was this the squishy pen i was using this is not the squishy one i was using this is a different squishy one it's also running out of ink this is the one that i was liking My three-quarter roommate knows every word of that movie. He loves that movie. I don't know if you can hear a winter storm that we're having, but there's a winter storm. Are supposed to be bricks. And here's Emerald City. It's not very emeraldy, is it? The big bad witch. There, add to shopping cart. One million dollars. That was yesterday's sunflower. So, one of these things is probably the most important. The product you're making, the drawing, the duplicate, the novel. If you're going to write a novel, let's say you're going to write a novel. Do you want to write it on separate pieces of paper or do you want to write it in a book, a notebook? And so you find the thing you need and you test out the paper. Is the paper nice or is it shitty? That's the, the product you want to write a book. Let's say so you check the paper, then you can work backwards, maybe. If you, if the nib is the most important and you'll just make do with whatever you can find later, you might have to spend a lot of money on paper you found a really nice nib that's very flexible, you might start there and then work this way. Um, but you need to think of all of these three things. This pen is going to work very differently and need different things. This is the thing that I have in common with you. This is if we're trading pens. I use the pen when I'm awake and you're sleeping and you use the pen when I'm sleeping. And I'm going to use this pen for a particular purpose down here and you might use it for a completely different purpose and it might be perfect for you to use this pen. Chances are, if the purpose is very different, you're going to want different paper and maybe different ink. But you need to think of all of these things. That's the thing I'm trying to say, is you need to think about the, about all four 
things. And then, of course, all of these things have subtitles. You, you know, you want a pen with a particular nib. You also want it to be long, and you want it to be fat because you've got big old monster hands. Okay, then you need a big fat pen with a nib that's like this. And you want red ink that's permanent. Good luck. And you want you want beautiful, smooth ledger paper like this in a ledger book like this. But they don't make these anymore. So you have to go to antique shops until you find one. Right now, I can buy a ledger book any day of the week, and it's going to have really, really crappy paper. So I'm screwed. I could have it made. I could go to the art supply store or a paper mill, and I could say, let me try, show me the smoothest and the hardest paper you have. And they bring out some samples, and you have your pen and your ink, and you say, I want this paper. I want a thousand sheets of it. And they give you a thousand sheets, and then you bring it. You bring it over to a book binder, and you say, I want to have these made into ten 500-page ledger books. Oh, first of all, then you have to have the lines printed. Do that. Then you have the books manufactured for you. Or you go to an antique shop and you buy a hundred-year-old ledger. So, you've got this and you've got this. And you, this is the thing that's going to cost more than everything put together. I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Crazy dreams. And I'm worried about the world out there. And at the same time, I don't care because I'm too old to care. I think about my niece and nephew and other people's children who inherited this nightmare that we've made. Not just we, 64-year-old people, but we, the human race, made. And wondering... How it's going to get any better. At least we will have someone in the White House that knows a thing or two. And I won't waste our time saying things like windmills cause cancer. And Maybe he'll have someone in charge of housing and urban development that isn't a brain surgeon. The only thing that Ben Carson... Let's just take Ben Carson as a... Here's Trump. His pie hole open. His hairdo. And he, he says... It, I'm going to hire only the best people. I know only the best people. I'm going to hire the best people. I'm going to hire the best people. And who does he hire for that job? The guy that he said out of his mouth, the same mouth, the same guy, he said he's a liar because he couldn't possibly have been stabbed or tried to stab someone in the belt buckle or whatever the hell it was back in the olden days. And this guy, Ben Carson, that he thought was going to be perfect for HUD. His, and he's a brain surgeon, remember, and a liar. But the only thing that he really said, Ben Carson said, about anything that even resembled a house, 
was that the Great Pyramid was built to store grain. So let's just think about that for one second. I've got a bunch of grain and I want to store it somewhere. I know, let's build the largest structure we possibly can and have it almost entirely solid. But make sure there's just a little opening that can hold a little bit of grain. Now let's do that. Does that make any sense to you? Okay, I can hear you saying, well, he didn't want the grain to ever be eaten. So let's store it in there and then let's seal it up completely and so no one can get in it. Okay, well that was that was a smart thing to do. So anyway, this guy that thinks this and also was a liar, this guy that was hiring the best people was in charge of housing and urban development. And let's get Betsy DeVos, who doesn't know a goddamn thing about school, to run the school system. So hopefully the new guy will know to hire people that actually know what they're doing. We're still doomed. Yeah, I know, we're still doomed. Bye.